Welcome to the famous Seamus Experience. And my name is Seamus O'Grady. And today is the first day of our, of, of our wilderness a wilderness guide school. <clears throat> and uh, the first thing that we're doing is uh, wrangling. Wrangling this week. <laughs> hey. Yep, and uh, <clears throat> And the class size is about 15 people. And typically the class sizes are smaller, but because of the COVID-19 thing, uh, the, uh, we have a large class. Kind of a round robin. We'll go in a circle, introduce yourself, um, tell us where you're from, a little bit about your background, and uh, horse experience, and types of horse experience. So pretty, pretty advanced in the horse aspect. Um, I grew up hunting. Buck Brandeman said it best. There's not enough days in a lifetime to learn everything you need to know about horses. Um, so I kind of roll my eyes when somebody says they're a horse expert because I don't truly believe there is one. There's horsemen, there's horse women, but I don't believe there's a true expert out there. Nobody knows everything. All right, well, go ahead and get this show. starting to make their way from the back rail, you'll start seeing which ones are the dominant ones. Pay attention to their ears. <clears throat> you can always tell what a horse is paying attention to by what direction his ears are pointed. And yes, they can pay attention to both two things at one time. Up here at the shoulder, right where the spine kind of wraps down, that's what you call the withers. <clears throat> so if you look at a mule versus a horse, they're a lot flatter back. They don't have that, that hip. Who doesn't have one? Hold in our <coughs> non-dominant hand, your nose band, you're gonna go about halfway out the lead rope and you're gonna put a bite in it. A bite is just simply a fold, just like that. You're gonna take that bite, you're gonna bring it through the nose band. <coughs> you're gonna bring the loop up over the top of the nose band grab the nose band and just shake it and it'll fold it just like that. That's how we hang up our lead ropes every time. Not even. Okay, Got it. this comes up over the head. Okay. So you come down from the back side. We're gonna go towards the tail. And I'll, what I do is I pinch my finger here. So I'm, my finger's just above the loop and I stay below my fingers. So you're gonna bring it back to the nose behind and then back to the tail through my loop. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Hold with my left hand at the rail, and I'll take it and I'll push forward and roll it over itself, just like that. So now I've got an overhand loop with the loop facing me. So I take this and I push it forward. Okay. <clears throat> then I'm going to take my tail and I'm going to bring it around the rope that's got the lead rope, and I'm going to put a bite in it and bring that bite through my loop, and then pull it tight. Take this Sling around there, and up through that. There you go. Yes. Nice. Yeah. boy. We're gonna add in what they call a night hitch. And a night hitch is nothing more than taking <clears throat> a half hitch. So you wanna make an underhand loop, and you're gonna bring your main loop, not, or not your loop from your knot, you're gonna go once, and you're gonna go twice. And then for extra security, if I still got enough tail, I'm gonna what they call daisy chain. So I'm just gonna bring a bite through my loop. Now I got another loop, I'm gonna bite through there, bite through there, bite through there. That way there, that rope's not dragging on the ground. And I'm not gonna pull my tail all the way through. I'm gonna kinda just let that tail hang. Try to cinch it down. That way there. Now, even if they set back, I can still pull that back. When they're night hitched, nine times out of 10, you're gonna have to cut that rope. Cause you're not- Oh, there we go. Four seasons in one day. Oh, yeah. Here's what I'm learning at camp. <laughs> 
got the first part. And then, I forgot what this is called. <laughs> and then daisy chain. Essentially it's a clove bridge. Yep. Yeah, I mean the easiest way is to do it the wrong way. It's just to do it. It's just to do it. Boom. Done. Look at that. Beautiful. Done. 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 <laughs> What's next? <laughs> Bring it. <laughs> Bring it. Oh. One more uh, way of tying to show One you guys. One more tie. This here we're only going to use. But now, instead of actually tying a knot, we're gonna leave a little excess underneath the, or between the pipe and the horse's nose. And what we're gonna do is, we're gonna wrap the rope around, but we're gonna wrap it back across that rope that goes to his nose, just like this. As that horse is standing there, he's got resistance. You know, he can't just walk away from the rail, but if he sets back really hard, and I'm not strong enough to do it, but if they set back hard enough, it'll just uncoil itself. Linebacker, I'm gonna watch his front front shoulder and his head. He's gonna tell me where he's gonna go. So basically the thing is, is to keep cutting them off until they give up. <clears throat> when people get impatient with, or they start getting impatient, they can't catch the animal, he's standing at the rail quietly. The last thing I wanna do is kiss or start swinging my rope. That's telling them, hey, I want you to move. I don't want him to move. <clears throat> hey, Louie. Come on, get out of here, Louie. Get out of here, Louie. And then you'll have guys like that that will try to blow out your other stock. With the halters, there's different ways of doing this. <clears throat> you know, you can grab the cheek bands and you can put it around their nose like this and then fidget with trying to get it up over. The easiest way for me, and especially the ones that they like to lift their head, <coughs> is hold your loop and your strap, or your, your brow band, or pole band rather, in this hand, okay. right arm up over, fish it on, and right there. So remember, we're coming to the inside of our loop. Now when we tighten this, I shouldn't have much slack. <clears throat> if this was all the way up into his eyeball, it's probably too big. If it was way down his nose and I only had about this much rope left, it's too small of a halter. So I'm gonna get it snug. I'm gonna make sure the knots underneath, here, underneath his throat and his chin are centered when it's tight. Slip it through, back around, pull it tight. Now I got a nice tight halter. He can't slip out of that. I had a feeling that was that. <laughs> well, that's fun. Same thing with the front leg. They really can't get you with the front leg because they're going out. So yeah. kind of stay to the back side. But the main thing that we're looking at is right where the saddle pads and saddles are going to sit. So pretty much right in front here of the wither. Take you about a minute from start to finish. And all it is is you're looking to get the big pieces of dirt out. Underneath, that's where the main dirt for them laying down. <clears throat> the proper way to hold the hoof pick is right across your palm like that. I'm gonna start up at the shoulder, then we'll work down. Some of them will pick it up just like that, other ones you gotta coax. How's it going? Doing pretty good. Yeah, me too. Right now. Good boy, Scooter. Good horse. So what I'm doing by carving off the sole here is I'm exposing, what I want to do is get the shiny, waxy looking foot there. That's when I know it's deep enough. That's the way the nail. Yeah, okay. yeah, it's just like a human nail. Okay. On a foot that you got to do some work with, you basically want to make sure it's flat and level. And you want to hold behind the fetlock here, up on the cannon bone. A lot of times they don't mind this too much, it's just like the nailing on the foot. What? Thanks, Dad. Yeah. Yeah. Smacking straight down. I'm actually widening that shoe out. <clears throat> 
Now I want to straighten my quarter out. I want to straighten from just above the front of the first nail hole back to just in front of the third. So I'm going to set the front of the shoe up there and I'm going to hit right here. Wrap my heel. Check to make sure my shoe's flat. What job does it? Do a pair of shoes. I'm doing is cut my nail back that I'm gonna get the same size clinch all the way across the foot. There it is. The thing on top of the pummel is your horn. <clears throat> the leather that's below the seat on the sides is your front jockeys, which should basically be this right here. If it has it on the back, there's a leather flap on the top. Strap on the other side of the saddle that's in a, that's tied up, which would go through your cinch, is called your latigo. latigo. <clears throat> the rings that the latigo and the offside billets are attached to are called your D rings. Some saddles have front D's and back D's, but not all saddles. Between the two of you, just kind of review those saddle parts. We'll take 10, 15 minutes to just go through. Groom the horse. We're gonna throw the pad over. We're gonna check to make sure it's even on both sides. And usually what you do is you throw that pad over and then just step to the back. We got it even on each side. Now we can grab our saddle. <coughs> and some swift motion. So you're gonna kind of whip it up, get that latigo and the cinch to go with the stirrups. So it's kind of one, two, three, throw it up over, onto their back and get it outside to inside. Take the tail towards his nose, come back across to his tail, from inside to outside of the D-ring this time. Now we have this little loop right here. Now it's kind of like tying a tie. You're gonna drop that down through and pull it tight. Next, underneath the tail, and then clip it. Proper tightness on this is right at the highest point of the rump. You should be able to just barely get two fingers underneath. And they should poop no problem. Yeah, so this goes just above the pooper. The pooper. Okay. So the crouper goes above the pooper. Hey. What's, the, what's the purpose of that? Keeps the saddle. So, I got the saddle all hooked up and ready to go. Breast strap, cinch in. All right. There we go. How's it going, Andrew? It's going good. Yeah. Are you a Doing professional now? Yeah. <laughs> I'm a professional, but I've done this a handful of times, so I just had to remember how. So it's coming together, but we have a short one, so it's kind of a pain in the butt. Yeah. So, start here, you pull this, and then just pull it straight out. All the way out. Keep yeah. it up. You want to place them up, so you got a center line in the shoulder. You want about an inch or two in front of the center line of the shoulder. So you want the pads a little bit further front. Put them down. That's right. Get that up. Main thing that you're looking for, I've got my two to four inches hanging out the front here. <clears throat> the front edge of my saddle is just behind the center line of the shoulder. So I got even spacing, you know, even pad hanging out both sides. I've got my saddle pad sticking out the front. I've got the saddle sitting where it needs to sit. 
It is, <clears throat> by doing it that way, the saddle looks like it's far front, but when you start riding, everything will slowly work back a little bit. It'll fall back into place. We just finished our first day at um, the Swan Mountain Wilderness Guide School, and the first day was wrangling, so horse handling, anything about horses and safety and stuff like that. Um, personally for me, a lot of it was just review, a nice refresher uh, when I go back to North Dakota, Medora, North Dakota, and um, work at the riding stables there for a little bit and shoot fireworks for the musical. But for these other guys, I believe it was your guys' first time handling horses. So yeah, so just name, a little intro, where you're from, or something interesting about yourself, and a high and a low from today. Uh, my name is Keith Girardier. I'm from St. Louis, Missouri, originally. Um, just been drifting around. High today, uh, getting to work with horses. Uh, low today, uh, being scared of working with horses, I guess. <laughs> Yeah. I'm Patrick Cook. I'm from Chittenden, Vermont. Uh, I like to hunt and I'm here to learn more about it. Uh, today's high would definitely be just getting to meet everybody and learn their stories. Um, definitely a low for me is like working with the horses. Pretty scared of those things. Yeah. Horses are pretty big animals, massive, powerful animals. And if you don't know how to handle yourself around them, they can also be quite the headache. Um, I do have a few injuries, a nice little horse kiss on my back. But these gentlemen, they're the lucky ones that get to share a tent with me and get to be on the famous Shams experience. <laughs>